Hello everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Uh, welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank, thank you for watching. Today we're doing an oil painting and uh, it's a scene that uh, I took a photograph of back several years ago in, uh, when I lived in Michigan and uh, it's an area that uh, along a stream that uh, my wife and I used to like to picnic and uh, I thought it would make a good interesting study today to uh, try to work on uh, primarily the rocks and the water. So uh, Today's theme, if there is one, is uh, really about uh, how do you paint rocks and get some three-dimensional effects in them and how do you make the water look real. So uh, I want to go over to my computer and show you a couple of things that uh, I did with the photograph to start with and, uh, and I'll be right back in a second, just hold on. Okay, I'm over here at my computer now and uh, I want to uh, take you through a little bit of the, uh, I didn't have to do much to this photograph, um, it was pretty well composed. I did crop it down very slightly, um, really hard for you to see probably, but I'll sh this is the uh, original image and uh, this is the cropped image. I just took a little bit off the right hand side. I do that to make these photos have the aspect ratio that my uh, canvas does. and. Uh, the canvas is 11 by 14 and so the aspect ratio is 1 to 1.27 so I use the pixel count and I cut this down either width wise or height wise to make a pleasing composition that will fit on the uh, 11 by 14 canvas and then I lay my 4 by 5 grid over it and that's how I develop the sketch and uh, usually looking at the grid or uh, some, some way I make this sketch uh, appear and uh, I'll show that to you in a second. You saw the sketch was up on the, uh, the broadcast a little bit before this. So that's the grid and uh, then I have as usual my value map which is really just three three values. I'm, I'm not going to stick to three values I'm sure but it has a pretty light sky and the, the middle ground is uh, somewhat uh, darker and then the water in the foreground is uh, considerably lighter, almost white in some areas. So we'll work with that and uh, see if we can make a good composition out of this little scene. Um, here's the sketch and uh, the sketch, the value map and the reference photo are in links below this uh, picture you're looking at here and uh, they will also be on my, they are on my website. As a matter of fact, if you click on one of those links, <coughs> it will take you to my website and that will give you a sketch. So you can use that for your um, for your uh, use if you're not painting along with me today. And if you are, uh, great, I'm glad to have you do that. And uh, so I'm going to go back over to the easel now and we will get ready to paint this thing. I'll go over the brushes, I'll go over the paints, um, and we'll get started. So hang on. Okay, I'm back. Uh, trying something new today. I haven't tried to paint this way before. I actually have a uh, sort of a bar stool here that I'm sitting on instead of trying to stand up for a couple of hours. So I may be adjusting myself here every once in a while. You may hear some strange noises. I don't know. I may, uh, at least this bar stool doesn't squeak like my other one did. <laughs> and so hopefully this will be a little better, uh, at least sound wise, than the other one. So uh, let me go over to the, the, the brushes and the paints and uh, I'll uh, show you what we're using. Okay, so here's my palette, and I have a whole host of um, flat brushes here. These are all uh, flats by Trakel, anywhere from a number 16 all the way down to a, I actually have some smaller ones than these, but these go down to about a, a six, uh, size six. And uh, so I have uh, a nice set of these to use. I typically like to use flat brushes, um, and so I will be using uh, these, you don't need this many brushes, by the way. Um, I, I used to have just a, a very few number of brushes, but I got a nice set here from Turkel. And uh, I also have some filberts uh, here, and you can see the uh, filberts. Uh, again, I have a range of those that are uh, all the way from a 16 down to something even smaller, like a 6, but I also have even some smaller ones. So I may not use all of those again, but uh, again, I, it's the kind of thing I have them if I need them. And uh, if I don't, that's fine too. Then I have my three little utensils I use that are left over from my Bob, Bob Ross painting days. I have this uh, number 5 
uh, painting knife which I use to mix paint sometimes. I have this uh, number three fan brush which comes in handy for a lot of interesting uh, effects. And I have this little script liner that I use for usually signing my name and some other fine twigs and branches and that sort of thing. So that is the brushes. Let me go over the paints. This is my uh, Bob Ross set of paints which you know about um, and have uh, seen before. Um, so I'll just uh, call them off here very quickly. We have uh, Titanium White, Phthalo Blue, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. And I add to that a color that I picked up from Grumbacher called a Ultramarine Violet, which helps me get some nice shadows and darks. I don't have to try to mix uh, a violet color with my reds and, and blues. So um, that's the colors. Uh, I also add, as you know, I have a a liquid white from Bob Ross that I use sparingly um, but and that makes the paint dry sm slower. I also have liquid by uh, Windsor Newton which uh, is a medium that helps paint dry faster. Usually uh, in my uh, painting session here I, uh, I don't use a lot of that but uh, sometimes I want it to dry a little faster but uh, the liquid white takes a long time to dry so I uh, use that sparingly and because I have a sketch on my uh, palette here on my uh, canvas, I don't use the liquid white and cover the entire canvas with it. So let me zoom in here, see if I can get my camera set up straight now with uh, my new setup and uh, get me out of the picture as much as possible and zoom in on this thing and get ready to go. I'd like to be able to show you as much of the canvas as I can um, and in addition I'd like to show you as much of the palette as I can. So. Now we have the palette and the uh, canvas and we're ready to go. So uh, I'm going to uh, start here by putting in a, a very light sky. I'm going to use my uh, uh, this big number 16 uh, flat brush and uh, we're going to put this sky in with titanium white and uh, a little bit of liquid white to get some uh, movement. I want to get the, these uh, mediums help give uh, movement to the paint. Uh, on the canvas. Uh, just a touch of blue and a touch of alizarin and uh, see if we can get a sort of bluish grayish color. I may put just a little bit of my midnight black in there. Uh, I just picked up a whole lot of blue for some reason. Oh I see what I did. I put the wrong color on here folks. Uh, my palette. I don't have midnight black. I've got... Uh, oh wait there it is. Yeah. Let me see. I'm sorry here. Let me see if I got it. Okay, I've got some midnight black. I don't know what happened there. I looked like I was pulling out some of the blue, um, and uh, I don't like that. Um, all right, so I've got a nice background color here that's sort of a grayish, bluish gray, I guess. And uh, we're going to start right up here on the top, and uh, it doesn't match the photograph exactly, uh, but that's okay. Um, we don't have to match the photo. I'm not trying to paint a realistic, a photorealistic painting here. Uh, I'm trying to uh, get a pleasing composition and many times the photographs that you take do tend to uh, sort of uh, give you erroneous values. Sometimes the, uh, the colors are very good uh, but the values sometimes uh, go wrong uh, in this particular photograph. You see under the the trees on the the bushes on the right hand side by the by the water, um, it, it's almost black. And so in nature, if you were out looking at this scene in nature, um, you would not see black under there. You'd see something very dark, but it wouldn't be black. It would be something with some some color in it, some tone in it. Uh, and uh, so when you paint from photographs. Um, you have to really be conscious of how dark you're making things and uh, make sure the photograph isn't fooling you into making something darker than it really should be. Um, the really darkest darks, I guess, in, in nature might be found in like wet rocks under the water, uh, the bottom, bottom of rocks. Um, 
and we could have some dark, really dark darks on, on these rocks that we're going to put down here in the, in the lower uh, part of this photo, of this painting, um, but um, rarely are they truly black. If I were out there in, in nature just painting this uh, uh, plein air, um, it would not be really a black black. Um, nothing like the photograph for sure. Um, I don't know if any of you have studied uh, how how digital cameras work, but uh, they always try to average out the values. So when you take a photograph, they're giving you an average value uh, of the uh, scene that they see because it's a it's a digital calculation based on a computer algorithm that uh, decides what color pixels. <clears throat> you're going to get out of this thing. So um, that's why the, the values deceive you because they're, uh, the, the computer chip in your digital camera is actually distorting slightly the, uh, uh, the uh, pixel to average it out. And you can, you can always test that if you think I'm uh, feeding you a line here or something. Uh, you can always test it by holding like a white sheet of paper or something up to uh, a, an image. Like I have some paper towel here. And if I take it and put it over this, it will change. You see the dark, what the camera did? I take it away and it lightens it up. I'm not blocking the light. It's actually the camera digital image is actually changing the value of that sky because it sees white below. So it's trying to average out this white with the sky when I take it away, it's lighter. That happens on every digital camera that you uh, that you have, and so when you get the photograph and you start looking at it, um, you have to understand that that's that's part of the uh, process that goes on inside that camera. Uh, and don't be fooled into making your sky. I made this sky fairly dark, consider considering the uh, uh, what the photograph looks like. So I'm adding some. Titanium white in here, adding some some clouds, uh, and just sort of lightening it up, and uh, so that it's not super dark, um, because I want to have that reflecting down here in the water. Uh, so I want it to be a little lighter than I've actually put it on. Um, one thing that happens when I I paint watercolors as well as oils, and so uh, I'm always when I'm doing watercolors, I'm always thinking about making the color darker than I really want it um, on the paper and uh, because it dries, watercolor dries about 20 to 30 percent lighter than what you put it on. So uh, you have to think about that when you're doing watercolors. If you're not doing watercolors, don't worry about it. The color you mix uh, should be the color that it stays because these colors don't, don't fade or change. Uh, at least oil paintings don't, and certainly acrylics don't either. So, all right, so we have an interesting little sky there that uh, has a little bit of movement in it, has some clouds in it. Um, looks like it could be kind of a overcast day. Um, and uh, it actually was, because when I took this photo, it was, uh, it was a little dark, it was uh, overcast, but it wasn't, the sky wasn't white. Um, so, my again, my camera, uh, tried to average out the, the the values in here and it made the foreground very dark the background very light okay so that's that is my uh, sky and uh, so now I want to start on trees I'm going to keep this same brush going here uh, pick up some of this uh, violet and we're going to start down I want these trees in the distance to be more uh, violet, bluish violet, and uh, they have to be darker than what's out there, otherwise you won't see them. Um, so let's just put in a few uh, interesting trees back here. Um, pick up some darker colors here, maybe even little browns.
I think it was actually a fall day when uh, we did this little picnic. Um, Okay, so if I work on these a little bit, I want to try to save some room around here for the uh, some of the trees I'm going to put in the in the background or in the foreground rather. So I'm going to paint around a few of these things so I don't end up with uh, forgetting where my trees go. So it's going to look a little funny right now, but at least you're getting the uh, essence of a of a background here that. Uh, um, has a lot of trees in it. I'm going to have some uh, trees in the foreground that are going to go all the way off the canvas at the top. So let's just see if I can put a few little wispy things on the top by just pushing up, uh, give you some more distance. If you can do that, it gives you a more distant feel. A little bit color on here, and then these trees come all the way down to actually come all the way down to this bush down here. Uh, background, so I'm going to change the color. I don't want it to be all uh, one color. I'm going to put some browns in there. Um, make sure I leave room for this tree here. Okay, I'm going to check my other computer here. Um, see if anybody is asking me anything. Uh, sky looks great. Thank you, Barbara. Hello from Ukraine. Oh, it's great. Uh, Simeon, I think it is. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window, and I'll uh, periodically check my window here and see if I uh, have any questions or something that I can make comments on. Uh, I think the uh, idea is that we're, uh, uh, I like to be able to communicate with you guys and talk to you while I'm painting. Um, I have a whole bunch of technology around me here and uh, <laughs> it's uh, a little bit fun to try to keep up with. I got right brain activities, left brain activities going on and uh, um, it's really a challenge to try to paint with my right brain and uh, watch the cameras and talk to you guys on the computer here uh, with my left brain uh, but uh, I love it and I really enjoy being able to uh, communicate with people particularly all over the world I get people tuning in from all over the world here uh, this gets to more green down here I'm going to just put in some uh, things that look like trees, the bottoms of trees here, leave some room around these. Um, yes, I do get pleasure from painting, Simeon. It's, uh, it's really, really fun. That's why I don't charge for these. I don't charge anybody for lessons or um, any, anything that's on my YouTube channel is all free. I do get, make a little money from YouTube, of course, on the, the views, but uh, it's uh, not enough to make a living off of unless you do crazy things on YouTube and bring up, uh, I don't know, I, the people I see on YouTube that make a lot of money are the ones that have uh, some sort of a crazy personality or they're, they're doing something crazy and goofy. Nobody that uh, I see that's uh, taking an hour to hour and a half to do a painting uh, <laughs> is making a fortune off of YouTube views. I'll tell you that uh, it's just because the, we love to do it and uh, we have fun doing it and sharing what we've learned, what we know, and uh, being able to share that is a, a good experience for me. And I hope you guys enjoy it too, and I appreciate everybody who tunes in and keeps watching and gives me comments. Let's see, over here I want to bring these trees down a little more. 
Put a little more brown in those, start reddening that up a little bit. Um, some of these areas here, over here maybe. Uh, I got a lot of brush in here, so I'm going to let that fade out. Um, but I want to get paint around these trees so I have room to put these nice tree trunks in over here. All right, so I'm just kind of building from the background to the foreground, trying to leave the trees in uh, in a uh, sort of an abstract or impressionistic state back there, so you really can't exactly see too much about what's going on. I think I'm going to use my uh, knife here and put in a few um, of the uh, vertical marks in here to indicate some tree branches, or not branches, but some tree trunks. You can always go back and use the point of a knife like this and come in where it's dark and just sort of put in some things like this. It, uh, it helps show that there's something going on back there in the distance. Uh, some more trees, that actually some white trunks and things. Um, so that's all you have to do to give it uh, a little bit of depth. And if you do too much of that, it looks sort of contrived, and, and I don't like to overdo it. Uh, but that's, uh, that's about as much as I want to do there. Let me see. I want to bring this down even a little more. I want these to make sure. I want to make sure I have the canvas covered back behind these trees. So I want to pull these down. Uh, I'm getting a little more browns and darker colors in there. Let's see, I can make the trees, in this case, that's almost the color of the tree I wanted. Um, so I may make that tree a little lighter. It doesn't have to match the photograph again. All it has to do is give me contrast. So if I have enough contrast, I'll be able to show you that there's trees there, even if they're black in the photograph and white on my canvas. I can still show you I've got trees back there. So you see a lot of trees already building that come down into the the foreground and uh, that's what I wanted um, and I think I'm going to hold on that right now and stop think about it I'm going to clean out my brush I haven't cleaned out my brush yet with all this paint that I've used I haven't cleaned out the brush I haven't even really wiped it on my on my paper towel here I'm doing that now and uh, so all of this was done with this number 16 flat it's probably about a I don't know, close to three quarter inch flat. Um, and uh, so I got those trees, I got that sky, all that stuff was done with just one one single, single brush. Um, now, I want to start changing the color a little bit. Um, maybe, now I I'll tell you what, now let's put in, let's put in some of these trees so I know where they are. And then we'll put the, uh, put the uh, branches on, on top of that after I, uh, or the bushes, the bushiness, I guess, on top of that. So I'm going to pick up some some white here. I'm going to gray it down just a little bit. I want to get just a little of my uh, um, a medium here. And some of these trees I want to be sort of light colored here. So let's put in a It's really white, isn't it? It looks very white on the on my camera here. I want one over here. Probably not quite as white. Um, around this tree, I'm going to put in some white and then come back and on the other side. Um, the sun appears to be almost coming behind this. I'm going to see if I can make it come from the right side. So if it's coming from the right, things on the left are going to be darker. So let's put in a, a dark side to this tree that goes all the way up and off the canvas over here. Uh, I'm using a, a, another flat, a number six Trekel flat brush. And it has to be darker because it's almost the color of that background. That's what I was worried about over here. So let's put in some dark. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. 
looks more like a tree now and if I uh, uh, want to make it stand out some more I can put some more black in there so this uh, this one over here is going to be dark on one side and I'm going to make it lighter on the other side on the right side where some sun is coming from um, here we go take it like this right off the canvas so I've got a mixture of colors in my brush I've got some white I got some brown I got uh, dark sienna uh, this black um, I'm still having trouble with that background. I made that background a little bit too dark, so I'm going to make sure I keep my tree darker. And uh, I'm using my midnight black for that. And so this will tell you this is a tree and not the background, hopefully. Yeah, that looks better. Um, I'll pick up another number, number six here that's. Uh, I'm going to paint with two brushes here because I want to put in, make sure I get this highlight side in over here. There, that helps tell the story a little better. Put in a few little marks here on it. Um, this one over here, I want some light on it. Yeah, these are better. Um, this one here is actually uh, going right off the canvas. So these are going to just kind of get lost in the in the foliage in the uh, in, in the bottom of the, the painting here. I'm going to have foliage all over this, so I don't want to uh, mess it up too much. Um, so here's another tree that's going to come in and just kind of squiggle off the top of the page like that. Um, bring it down a little more here into there. Like that. Another one. Um, using Van Dyke brown, black, and uh, a little bit of my uh, dark sienna. Even throw a little alizarin crimson in this one to sort of redden it up a little bit. Um, and with that medium in here, um, it's it's going on much smoother. Uh, and I have these paints, these Bob Ross paints have a lot of oil in them, uh, a lot more oil than some other paints you might use, so um, they tend to flow pretty well. Get my uh, brush with the lighter color in it here. Come back on the right side and see if I can put in some highlights over there that make this tree stand out a little better. Yeah, that's something like I want. You could spend a lot of time on something like this if you uh, have the time and want to devote some time to it. Um, this is going to go off the... All of these go off the top of the canvas pretty much. Um, And they all get lost, so I'm uh, keep checking back on my um, screen here behind me. I have a monitor behind me that uh, tells me what you're looking, shows me what you're looking at, and uh, so I can keep on top of that. And so as I put some more branches and a lot more stuff in here, foliage, it's going to start looking better. Um, this one is almost too white. Um, touch him up a little bit. Uh, add a few more darks in there. Okay, now let's see here if I can get. Uh, might as well do these ones on the left side as well. While well, I got this brush going, I got this paint going. Pick up a little more uh, violet in there and see what happens over here. I want to put in. Twist the brush, make it. This one's a little bit closer to us, so it's, uh, I'm going to make it closer to us by just um, how dark I make it. Like that. And it's got a couple of branches that go out like this. Got a 
whiter there. All right. Um, the base of it, it's going to come up against some rocks down here on the bottom. And there's one over here on the left. I'm going to make him more purplish color, I guess. Maybe put a little more purple in him. Um, this one over here, there's a big one that goes all the way from down here, all the way up the side of the canvas. Um, some purple and white in it. Uh, it actually curves back in and gets darker up here at the top, like that. Okay. Some more black on here, maybe darken this somewhat in some areas. Um, more black. The black that's in the Bob Ross palette is not a real black black. Um, it actually turns sort of purplish when you start putting in uh, other colors. When you mix it with, actually mix it with white, it turns a, a violet itself. Um, so um, you have to be aware of that. I don't want to overuse my violet color, but I think it's a pretty color that. I'm going to put in here like this, take this guy, take him all the way off the top as well. Okay, I'm getting some nice looking trees here. I'm trying to make them different sizes, a little bit different widths if I can. Uh, different distances apart so they don't uh, look like they're uh, all like over here I've got some different distances but some are almost too uh, almost too regular it's almost like a uh, equal distance there you want to try to break that up if you can so you don't have have it look like we don't want it to look like a picket fence or a fence over there we want it to look like these are growing randomly and uh, so forth. So, okay, Shirley, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so that's a lot of trees and branches. I think I need another white, off white type few tree uh, things over here that kind of balance the ones on the right. So I'm going to just flick in some very light uh, trees here that kind of Go back there just to lighten it up a little bit, add some interest. Uh, this one's still almost too white. It bothers me. The dark is like pulling my eye over there. Okay. So now we have that. Now, so the depth, I want the depth. I want you to kind of focus. We're going to have your eye, hopefully, start with these rocks and kind of lead back with the, the river. It runs back here, the stream, and all the way back in the back. I want to get your eyes back in the back. So this idea is to try to... Um, move your eye. One of the things that artists are really good at, and the good artists are really good at, is moving your eye to the focal point and and through the painting. So a lot of the design decisions or the uh, the objects that you put in a painting uh, can help do that, can help point your eye. And that, that these rocks we're going to work on down here uh, will hopefully do that as well. So let me finish off these trees over here. They're a little bit... Okay, so there we go. So I've got uh, a lot of trees just waiting for tons of more branches. And uh, I will leave that for now. We're going to start here in the background and start pulling some of these uh, um, bushes and shrubs and small trees, that sort of thing, we're going to start pulling that forward. Um, so let's see, where is the water? The water goes here, it goes over there, 
comes back here, I think. Um, the water. Having trouble figuring out where the water goes, actually. Um, here it goes like this. It goes around. There's a tree that sticks out there. Comes back. Okay, so that's all sort of gray, grayish water, steel-colored water. Um, I'm going to uh, see if I can put some of that in with my. Uh, I probably should use a fan brush. I'm going to use this flat brush here and uh, pick up just a fraction of this water back here is uh, where the water starts back there. Um, I'm going to have a bank around it, but I want the water to go here. Water, uh, you may have heard me say this before, water has no color. Um, it only reflects what's in it, what's around it, what's over it, and what's under it. Um, so for water to uh, show up, you have to have things around it. You have to have rocks around it, trees around it, dirt underneath it. Um, otherwise, it's just a clear, nice clear liquid. Um, and uh, so I just want to make this sort of fade into nothing back there. Um, and I want to have it sort of reflecting some shadows that kind of come across um, like this. There's some things that make it look like it's water back there. Um, so I'm painting from the uh, back to the front pretty much. And I'm trying to make this look like water that's sort of running a little bit out of those banks here and there. Um, and it's sort of coming this way. Um, and uh, hopefully you have the depth. You see if I, if I narrow this down it helps the perspective. It's a uh, hello Olivia Power from Ireland. Oh, welcome! Thank you for joining. Um, in the back, back there, I want to make sure I have a little bank back in here that helps it stand out a little bit more, and a few little bank areas here uh, that help that as well. So it's just helping to put a, something around it uh, to make it stand out. So you can tell that it's something here that's kind of moving, okay? And uh, there is some, some really dark shadows that kind of fall over this. But um, I'll leave it maybe like this for now. All right, that's looking like water that's receding. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I've got some other colors. This water has some, it's a little bit of green in it. It has a little bit, I've got some yellow here. I haven't used my yellow yet, my bright yellow, cad yellow, uh, sap green. And uh, we have some bushes that are up here that are sort of light. It's almost like a spring day, but I think it was actually fall when we were there. Uh, and I'm going to sort of highlight these, this big bushy tree that sort of sticks up here and connects down here. Um, there's a lot of this yellow. Uh, that's not really bright yellow because I toned it down with green. But um, if I come back now with a little bit of white over that, I can get a lighter color here and sort of add some highlights on that, like this. And we're making a nice sort of a yellowish bright set of bushes and trees and that sort of stuff here. So it sticks out like that, comes over this way, actually connected to a 
actually connected to a um, trunk that kind of comes down this way. So I'm going to just put that in there. Um, we've got a few other colors on the other side. I have maybe a little more orange in them. Let's see if I can pick something up for that. Um, over here we got some just hitting the side of the brush, just touching. I've got a bunch of paint on here, uh, and I'm just it's almost scrubbing it it's, um, like this. Okay. Um, got some more back in here. There's some a little greener maybe back in here in some areas. Got some bright yellows. So it's starting to make that kind of pop out, um, and uh, that's really what I'm trying to do with it, make it uh, pop out. We've got a bunch of uh, yellow and orange colors down here. Uh, this is along the bank. There's some greens here. Let me see if I can put some of this in here while i got this in my brush almost too yellow but I can come back and put in some uh, green over that. I'll tone it down just a little. Um, put some on the other side. Make sure we don't isolate this tree or we don't want to look like it's glued on. We want it to kind of go behind that tree otherwise you don't know where it is. That tree is not even in a photograph right here. This big tree is not even in a photograph. I sort of created that out of uh, my artistic license. Thank you, Olivia. Artistic perspective looks fabulous. Well, it uh, yeah, it looks pretty decent on this uh, on the screen you're looking at. I when I get up close, it's uh, hard sometimes for me to tell how good or how bad something looks because my face is right in it over here. Um, <laughs> so I uh, appreciate your feedback. If it looks good, I appreciate you telling me that and. Uh, Pulling in some more of the water here. I want to make sure I cover this water before I start putting things over it. Otherwise, I'm going to have trouble getting getting uh, water back in there if I'm not careful. Load up some paint. Add uh, one of the things I've been guilty of, and maybe you are too, is not using enough paint. Sometimes I, uh, I tend to get stingy, I guess, with my paint and some reason I use less than I should and I have to keep reminding myself to put some paint down. Put some paint on there. Okay, so we're just building this water as it's coming forward um, down here toward the rocks and uh, if I put enough little highlights of uh, white out there, you'll be able to see that there is some maybe ripples in that water and some dark uh, shadows under under some things. Uh, need the black, black or brown. All right, let's hold it at that. Um, starting to get into my two or three brush mode here. Um, I'm going to put in another, I think those brushes there are too large, I'm going to get a smaller, maybe even a round brush, a number two truckle round, and see if I can put in um, this tree branch, or this tree trunk that I want to come up from here. problem is I need to have that water in behind it before I start putting that thing in, so let's put this water all the way down here. I want that water to go here because this, this tree branch or trunk is going to come all the way from down here um, and over. So let's put this in and have that part of it so I can paint over it. Otherwise I'm going to have a heck of a time trying to get, to get the water in without painting out my, uh, let's see here, without painting out my uh, tree if I put that tree in there. Alright, 
right, I'm getting some movement here on this paint. It's flowing on pretty nicely. Put this paint in with, there we go. So I'm picking up some other colors. I have a little red in there, I got some yellow in there, some blue in there. Um, it's hard for you to see that probably, but uh, I'm trying to uh, fill this water in as much as I can as we're going forward. Um, I may want to go back and put a rock or something two or three out back there. Um, so what I was getting ready to do was to paint this tree here with a small round brush. I have a pretty narrow point and I'm going to see if I can kind of put this in here, bring this tree down right into there, Make it a little wider. There we go. Make it darker at the bottom if I can. and put them up there and let some of the branches and stick out, go in and out. Could use my liner for this, my script liner with a bunch of uh, thinner to get it uh, thin enough to go on top. However, I'm just sort of using this Like this and there's other things going on back here as well okay all right so that looks like I've got a little bit of that tree covered there's a lot more tree a lot more uh, yellow there that I haven't put on so let's take a look here and see I can sort of a little bit out here over the water, some back there, put a few more up this way. I just put some some paint on the bottom of my brush and I'm trying to make this more of an abstract shape. It was almost like a, almost like a triangle and uh, you don't want to have triangles and uh, circles or squares in your paintings if you can keep from it. Try to make it abstract. See I have a a little bit of a look here I can go if I draw around this I can go up around like this in out in out down around so it, it, if you were to draw a circle around that try to draw around that shape it was not be a circle it would not be a square it would not be a, any geometric shape that you would recognize so I'm going to throw a few more hits over here in some areas just to keep it light and uh, make sure I'm going to, this is going to be some grass over here I think, I'm going to make this a grassy area, um, a little bit different than the painting. Um, I'm going to echo that color maybe over in here somewhere, I put a few, uh, some sort of bushes over here that I can uh, put in front of the tree. The sky is the bottom of that tree. Um, all right. Let's hold on that for now and see if I can come back and do just a little more work on this water here. There's a lot of things going on in this water that make it look like it's really fast running and ripply and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to give that impression here with the uh, these little squiggly lines that help do that. There is a some sort of a log, something laying back in here that I'm going to put in. It's uh, it's been run over and beat up and sort of um, looks like it's a trunk that's been a tree trunk that's been sort of fallen out here. I don't know um, something like that. Put it out there and put some darks around it. Okay, everybody staying with me here? Okay, um, I got another couple logs I'm going to stick out in the water over here as we get to the water, but uh, sort of wanted that to, to be there. There's some other shapes that sort of come out here into the water. It looked like they might be some uh, 
might be left over for some, some trees that have fallen. I'm going to put some dark bottoms on some of this back here to make sure you see the bank so you know this is the water going back in. It's receding into this area. Where was I? Right in here, I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to give that a, this these sides some uh, change so they you can tell they're the side of the creek and not creek is not running over um, and this area in here has a lot of brush and stuff going on um, put this in dark in here like this this is a this is another bank that goes back. It's got a lot of brush going on. I'm going to just hit this very easily and then come back with some uh, alizarin, some reddish color here that uh, shows up in that painting and use the back of my brush now and just sort of put in these bushes. I thought I was going to make that green. I thought I was going to make a little green grassy area there, but I'm going to kind of follow the photograph a little better here and see if I can uh, get in some of this uh, what's actually there in the photograph uh, put in a few of these yellow things around the sky is the bottom of this tree and uh, have some nice white flowers or something sticking up here in this the combination of colors I'm lightening up a lot more than what the photograph is. Uh, got a lot more yellow in it, um, but I'm picking up the brown, coming around, coming in here. I might pick up a little more of my uh, alizarin, reddish color. Whoops, where'd it go? Um, there we go. Um, I echo that red color over here in some bushes. Cover the bottom of this tree. And uh, so what I'm doing is disguising the bottom of those trees so it looks like they're actually embedded in the in the ground and you don't have uh, those trees stuck on like I glued them on. So I'm going to put in some base under here and again outline my water and uh, so we're getting some of the what I'm trying to get trying to achieve here, I think. It's got an interesting color palette. It's got a lot of uh, cool colors in it, and I'm throwing in some really nice warm colors in it. Um, foreground, I'm going to see if I can pick up some of this green color now and pull a little bit of this green that I had up there, pull it down over here and see if I can get uh, a little bit more of that green color in here. There is some grasses growing. Most of the grass is growing on the uh, on this side where the, there's actually some picnic tables back in here. Uh, since I was there I know that. Uh, but you don't have to know that to paint something. You can just make it up in your own mind and say, oh yeah, there was picnic tables. There's green grass over here. So here we go, putting in some more grass, I want to get a little more depth in that grass, put a little more uh, change of color back here, we'll put in a put a few more reddish bushes over here, that's probably too red, uh, but I'll just throw them in and see what it looks like. We'll step back and take a look. Um, over here I want to make them redder, I think. Let them hang out over the water. And uh, let's see how we're doing here. Time-wise, we've been going about 42 minutes, so we've got good bit more to do here. This is some grass. I'm kind of taking my time with this folks. I hope you appreciate that and uh, are still following me along because I uh, sometimes I think I get rushing 
watching, trying to get through with a, a painting in a certain amount of time. And when I get done, I say, boy, I could have done that better. I could have tried that technique or show you something else. Um, but, but right now, I'm uh, pretty happy with the way this is looking. Um, it's got a good mixture of cool and warm in it. And this green is uh, showing up on the other side over here. So I'm going to see if I can throw some of that in. There's a lot of green grass and stuff over here on this side. Sort of comes out to the this big tree, actually. Uh, just a little green grass coming over here. Like this. So let's put in some of that. Could be a little yellower, but let's put in so put in a few Sap green, almost pure sap green in here. Getting out to where the rocks are over here, so I'm going to uh, start changing with my um, painting style here to get into these rocks. I think I want to do this right side over here, finish it off a little bit. There's a little more grass area here that we can put in. That is way too green. Tone it down a little bit. Put some ochre in there, maybe there's a big uh, log that I want to show here that's kind of sticking out. A lot different than the photograph. I don't have the uh, um, photograph in mind right now. I'm just sort of reacting to the, the canvas. Okay, big. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how do I do this? Get some reddish colors in here and throw in a few orange bushes and things that are sitting around here. little flowers that are blooming things. Let's echo those over here. I want to put some of those over here so I don't have the one color on one side. I want to have some balance and some harmony in this thing even though I don't want it to look identical to both sides. That's another uh, interesting tip that you may not have heard or maybe I've told you before but a good way to tell if you uh, have a painting that's a good composition, you want to make sure that the left side doesn't equal the right side. In other words, if you were to take a, a knife and cut this painting in half, would it look like the two sides are different? You want to do something different on one side than the other side, but you don't want to um, ignore the balance. You don't want to just say, well, I can only have green on one side and not on the other. You want to sort of try to balance them out a little bit. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm throwing in this, uh, these other colors and sort of putting in some flowers and things that really would be here in the spring and are not there in the photograph. So let me see. I want to get something for this log over here on the right. This log that sticks out. I'm going to come down with some Van Dyke and some. This log really isn't in the photograph, actually. 
There are some logs, but this one's not in there. A little bit of a highlight on top. Two, three tones. If I can get in, uh, I can get in three values. Usually, I can make it look three-dimensional. You want a highlight on top, a middle value in the uh, middle, and something dark in the bottom. So that is what gives three-dimensionality to your objects, whatever they are. A tree, a rock, something like that. So it's going to stick out. I may come back and hit that again after I put some more of that uh, this water in, which is what I'm going to do right now. Pick up some more of this uh, watercolor that I've got going over here and just sort of Start putting it in, lighten it up a little bit. It is darker over there on the right side, but it has some light reflections here from the sky. So let's just put that in and get some more uh, my, my medium. Go around these rocks. Put this in, and uh, there's a rock right here. I'm kind of leaving room for to remind me to go back and paint that in. Um, over here, I want to put this water and dark bank over here. Making that bank so we're going to put in some things over there let me hit some more of this water in here I don't want to get that brown in my brush if I do I got to go back and wipe it out So let's put in some this water was really a lot darker than that. A lot darker. I'm gonna darken it up a little bit here. I'm moving the brush very fast. I'm getting some uh, what you call dry brush actually. Uh, in some areas. It lets that canvas show through, which uh, is kind of the equivalent of some sparkles on the water. Um, if you move your brush very fast, I just dropped a big glob of paint on the floor. Fortunately, I have a floor that doesn't mind that. Okay, we've got another little uh, log sticking in here. So, so to make the this really I want to make this very dark in this corner here. This is really all very dark. And if it's not moving, if it's, it's uh, sort of stagnant, you make your vertical reflections this way, like this. But if it's moving, you have to do something slightly different. You have to give it some uh, some highlights and some... Uh, and one way to do that is to take your brush and put some white paint in it and uh, get some dark up here. There's a lot of reflections of this back in this area now that I'm re-looking at this. There we go. So we've got some vertical things coming down that sort of reflect our trees. Um, but if I take some white paint in this brush, see if I can make it happen. I don't know. It may not work. Stand by. Um, try to get some of this sparkle in there. I'm going to see if I can... I don't have... I got too much dark in this brush. It's going to 
not work. Some more clear paint. Okay, and see if we can just sort of do a quick little brush across like this. I'm getting some random highlights. See how that works? And I've got the vertical streaks as well, so I've got some reflection. I've also got those little sparkly type things going on. So uh, that's a, another trick that I'm sort of teaching you here. Um, you can put a dark, dark water in and uh, come back over it and get uh, to get your reflections going this way. And then you come back over it with another quick, very quick brush horizontally with some highlight paint. This thing going here. Um, So there may not even be anything to reflect here. I'm just sort of showing you this for the, to show you how it works. Again, I'm taking white paint, getting the brush, and then just doing a really fast horizontal stroke. If you have something dark behind it, it'll stand out. See there? That's how you do it. Okay, so now I got a lot of movement. I got an interesting little sparkles in the water, um, got some reflections in the water, and uh, have a good, fairly good dark corner down here in the lower right. Um, so let's just sort of redo some of that and uh, make sure we have good dark reflections going on down there. All right. Um, now, got rocks and I got this these grasses to sort of finish up and then I've got a bunch of little tree branches to put in so let's see if we can work on the rocks rocks a lot of times they're brown in nature these rocks are uh, more gray and have some green in them so I'm gonna pick up my black and white <clears throat> again and see if I can get some some gray rocks in here with a little brown in some of them and uh, they gotta be darker than that why? Because you can't see them. So I want the bottoms to be very dark. And middle to be middle tone. And the tops to have a little highlight on them. So I'm going to get me a little brush here. I'm going to call my highlight brush. One of these brushes. And I'm sitting in my solvent there. I don't think I want the round brush. It's not going to make a good highlight brush. Not for a flat rock. Here's one that I had a lot of dark paint in. Get that paint out. Get my highlight color going. It's, a, it's a, going to be a lighter gray. Not totally white, but if I put it in here this sort of pull it down into the rock I want it a little bit lighter than that I want some white carry in it needs to be a little bit darker than what's behind it but it needs to be uh, lighter than what's in the middle of that rock okay so let's take another rock now and uh, I just used the wrong brush get my big fat brush here and see if we can put in another rock that sort of lays out here like this. These rocks, I've read some artists say that you know if you're painting rocks try to uh, make them angular all the time. Don't make them rounded because roundedness um, doesn't look as good in a rock as angular does so um, but the only exception in my mind is that rocks that have been subjected to a lot of running water for a lot of years whether they're granite or anything else they get their 
corners beat off. They're, they're rounded. I mean, in this photo, you can see rounded rocks everywhere. All right, so I'm putting in a little highlight color here, again, on top of that rock. And back in here, a little more highlight color. And try to get a couple of values out of that, a highlight color and a mid value, and then leave the, leave the darkest value for the bottom. So that's what I'm doing, making that bottom really, really dark. Okay. The other thing people do, I hope uh, you're enjoying this. The other thing people do is to uh, put too many rocks in. I've got, there's a ton of rocks here, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm looking at the photo, there's at least 20 rocks in here. I am not painting 20 rocks. I'm painting about five or six. And the reason for that is, if I painted 20 rocks, I would really bore you to death. And it would confuse the viewer. So I'm painting just a small number of rocks. I'm going to put some angles on some of them. And uh, it's always a good case if you're trying, if you've got a whole lot of rocks, try to group them together and make um, make a bigger rock out of it. Don't try to paint 20 rocks. Okay. Some of these have little nicks and nooks and crannies and crevices and that sort of thing. Um, ooh, I got some blue in that brush. I don't want that blue color. I don't mind having a little bit of a lizarding color in there. Reddish color. It's not bad. Let's see what happens here if I do this. Let's put in a really dark base. And uh, I'm going to make a one that's even bigger here. So I'm leaving just a little bit of room between these rocks so that I can come back and put a, a highlight color in there. And when I do that, I also drag it down into the rock and give myself a little movement that makes it look like it's three-dimensional. Um, over here, some highlights, mix and crack crevices. Um, over here where this gap is, I'm going to put really dark in there. Make it really stand out. Okay, hopefully you can see how that's standing out with that really dark black coming in there. Okay, so Putting in this, if you notice that, but putting in this little lighter color here, when I make this angular, like this, all of a sudden it looks like it's got a angular top on it. See how that works? Um, one out here, I'm going to put a little angle on him too, change him around a little bit. Um, and then down here we've got another big, got a big old rock down here on the bottom that's interesting color. It's, uh, it's actually gray with green moss on it. Uh, I'm going to make it not quite as gray, I don't think. A rock. I'm going to leave room here for that tree to go through. Um, so this rock is really rounded. 
a little bit of green, see if I can pick up some other colors in here and see if I can put a few more colors in some of this area here. Bring it out. Picked up some of that green, so we're going to put in a little bit of a green or ochre base there. Get back and see if I can put in some a little bit more highlights on this right in here. And some dark areas where I think it needs to have some a little more definition. It's not real dark, but let's darken it up a little more. I want this to look like a almost like a a ball or something out there. It's really a, a unique looking rock. Okay, let's stop on that for a minute. I'm going to put this tree trunk. There's another tree trunk sticking out through here that I totally left out, and it goes right in here like this, and sort of comes out into the water like that. Darker on the bottom. Make the top longer so it looks like it's laying in the water. And it sort of comes back in here. Actually comes all the way back into the like that. Get a dark. I'll put him all the way back, make him look like he's laying all the way down. Some brown in there, a little bit of highlight on him. I'll make it stand out so that it does look like it's a tree trunk. All right, looks like it's kind of bent. All right, now let's see if we can finish this thing up here. We've been going an hour and a little over an hour, something hour and 20 minutes. No, not 20, but probably hour and 10 minutes maybe. I'm going to finish off this grassiness over here. Let's darken it down, get some more. Could be some water over here, I suppose, but I'm not going to try to make you think that. All right, now, a lot of fine little details I can put in here. I got some, uh, um, a lot of branches, a lot of twigs. Try to finish this thing off, see if we can get her done here. Not too much more to do. Merge those together. Help this to stand out. There we go. All right, so I've got some big old clunky rocks in there. Got some, uh, I don't know what this mossy like stuff is on top of this rock here. It's uh, has some green in it, some white in it, some yellow in it, and it's just sort of, I don't even know if I can paint them. It's probably that. Yeah, no, if it's going to work, probably need more time to do this than I want to allow in this painting session. But um, I put a few little green mossy-like things on top here that sort of can kind of make you see there's is some moss on top of this rock. There might be moss on some of those other rocks back there too. Actually, there is. Uh, some of them have more than green on them. They have a grayish color on them. Lighten it up in some areas, maybe up here. 
All right. Okay. Um, I'll probably do a little more on those if I want. Maybe some, a few more highlights. But let's uh, see if we can work on these. Uh, there's a lot of debris and a lot of stuff laying around here on the ground. This is basically, um, I think it was leaves, but I'm just going to sort of, sort of make it uh, change the color a little bit, add uh, some ochre in there. This is the grass is trying to come through and All right, I think that's pretty well done. All right, I'm going to get my little script liner now. Haven't had him out for a long time. Um, a lot of thinner. And I want to come back and start on the top of these trees again and see if I can put in some uh, branches and uh, a whole bunch of stuff that needs to go in this painting to sort of finish it off. It's it's really kind of uh, not finished at all. I want to put in some uh, there's some things that sort of come out like that. Uh, the more thinner you have, the easier this will go on. And put another put some craggly old branches on here. Make it go like that. A lot of uh, stuff going on here. Let's see, I get some other colors, maybe get some grays in here. Start picking up a little lighter color. There's a lot of uh, thinner needed. Um, there's actually branches coming across from somewhere else. So let's just put them in there. I don't know where some of these are coming from, but we'll throw them in and uh, help try to complete this scene here. Um, I got that. I'm going to go down here and put a couple of little twig like things or something sticking off of this log down here. Put in a few things sticking up over here that sort of look like they might belong there. Um, Try to cover up this front side of the log with a few things that maybe be growing in front of it. Left over, I don't know, grasses, who knows. Let's just fill it in here. Um, try to hide the bottoms of these trees so they don't look like they're glued on. I think I told you that already. Um, but we've got branches coming in from all angles here. We'll pick up a some lighter color, even some whites, maybe off-white. Um, coming in down like this, and over, maybe some stuff like that. Could actually have some reflections in here. Um, I want to put in a... That looks more like there's a log or something there stuck out that's got some uh, things on it. And I think I prevented you from seeing me do that if you were licking live. And here's what I was doing. Some stuff in there. Up here, let's put in, we've got a whole bunch of other branches that uh, stick up. That thing goes all the way off the top of the canvas. Um, 
a lot of almost like calligraphy type things going on here. Um, more thinner. If you say you can't paint a straight line, that's okay. You don't need straight lines for this. You need squiggly lines. Um, So just filling in where I can, uh, where I think it needs some work here. We've got branches going every which way, but you got to be sort of judicious in your use. You can't just put all the branches in you see or you'll drive people crazy. Um, See, there's a few things coming out like this, maybe. If you can put things across the water, put out some more little branches like this. Um, not too much going on behind this rocks, but I'm going to make some things going on behind there. Um, over here, there's really nothing going on over here, but I'm going to put in a few things to fill this space up. So we have a, looks like we got something going on. Um, Ochre. I'm going to get a few of this ochre here and put in a few things that cover up these. This is a very dry brush. Did you notice that? You probably can't tell that's a dry brush. But as I throw those on, they, uh, when I do it real fast, it breaks across the, the canvas and gives me a rough texture. So add a few more darks in there. Put another little uh, something out there on that, so it tells somebody that's a a log that's fallen in the water. Oops, that's an identical duplicate. That's that's called a clone, folks, right there. Clone. Don't do that. Don't make clones. How am I going to get it out of there? Well. How about bringing in some more water? Covered up. Take this one out. All right, I got rid of that clone. People do that a lot with rocks. They do that a lot with uh, mountains. Um, clones are boring, and you should stay away from them. Um, just a few more light colored branches here and I'll be done. Some sort of white, some things come over here that's coming from somewhere, I don't know where. Uh, okay, so we've got stuff going on everywhere. Um, the only other thing I might do is just put in a few. Um, Things that look like they're getting getting some leaves on some of these. They're getting to get some uh, in some areas, so this all doesn't look like dead trees back here. These are starting to bloom out, getting a few uh, green and yellow things going on. So I'm just sort of adding a few little tidbits up there. Um, Maybe some shadows of some things over here. All right, I'm going to overwork it if I don't stop. So I'm going to stop. We've been going a good almost an hour and a half. Um, got some room over here for my signature. And maybe put it right in here. Some more paint here. I'm going to... All right, folks. I hope you like that. I hope you uh, can give that a try. Sorry, take that there. Um, so 
I ended up standing up before the day was over. Um, my uh, seat worked fine. It was just a little awkward, and I wanted to try something else, so I did. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you like that. I hope you can give that a try. Um, and let me know how you do. Let me know what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Um, and uh, I think uh, I want you to check out my Facebook page, check out the uh, sketches and the value map and the original photo are down below. Uh, and some other links are down below for some products that I recommend. So if you want to visit those websites and uh, take a look at those products, I'd appreciate it. Um, I think that's all I want to say about this. Uh, I hope you like my work on the water and my work on the uh, rocks. Those were kind of the themes for today. And uh, so until I see you next time, I want to say this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.